When he wrote The Lord of the Rings, J.R.R. Tolkien filled the story with a lot of what you would call traditional heroes. You come across characters like, like the brave and strong Aragorn, the, the ranger who's the king who is to come again. You have the powerful wise wizard Gandalf who uh, sacrifices himself to save everybody else. Th there is a strong argument that is made that the primary or the main hero in The Lord of the Rings isn't Aragorn or Gandalf or even Frodo. It's the gardener. It's Sam. There is a sequence where Sam has to do some extraordinary heroic things and face a terrible evil. But again and again, Sam's job is not those massive acts of heroism. It's the simple, the ordinary, and the mundane. And when I think of Sam, I think of some of the words of one of my spiritual heroes, a woman named Catherine Doherty. Because Catherine wrote and explained a concept that she called the duty of the moment. And this is what she has to say about it. The duty of the moment is what you should be doing at any given time, in whatever place God has put you. You may not have Christ in a homeless person at your door, but you may have a little child. If you have a child, your duty of the moment may be to change a dirty diaper. So you do it. Catherine was speaking largely to, to parents, people like me, who do have children, who do have responsibilities to care for their children. But the principle applies whether you have kids or not. You have been placed in a specific time. You've been given certain responsibilities. And the way in which you undertake those or not is the way in which you fulfill your duty of the moment or not. I'll give you some examples of, of how you might be called to fill the duty of the moment. One way is giving your best, not just doing the bare minimum. Now, as, as a student, as a young person in a family, you're going to get asked to do certain things. You're going to get asked to do chores or homework, or maybe you have a job and you have certain responsibilities you have to undertake there. Your duty of the moment is not just to do the, the least amount you can do to, to say that you got it done. You know, make your bed so you throw the sheet over the top. Your duty of the moment would be to do your best and to make it properly. It might not be to rush through the homework, but to give your best to the homework. Put your best effort into it. Why? Because that's what God's called you to do in this moment. Now, your duty of the moment can also apply to the friendships that you have. That you have a responsibility, that you have a duty to be a faithful friend. Now, how do you be a faithful friend? Well, you, you spend time in relationship with your friend. You share joy and adventures and experiences with them. And... If your friend is in some kind of trouble or in some kind of danger or is doing something that you and they both know they shouldn't be doing, a faithful friend is the person who calls their friend out on those sorts of things. Be intentional with your words. That's another way, I think, to do that your duty of the moment. Be intentional with your words. Avoid gossip. Avoid words that are hurtful to other people, whether they're there or not. Let's even be mindful of how much you swear. The Bible has many places where it cautions us to be aware, to be mindful of the words that we use in all sorts of circumstances. So part of your duty of the moment could be to be mindful of your words. Be aware and be deliberate with your words. Love people and use things and not the other way around. St. John Paul II once said that the, the correct and proper response to another person is to show them love and care and compassion, to recognize their dignity. And there are lots of ways in which you might be tempted, in the culture in which we live, to use another person. To use them as an object of fantasy, thanks to the, the various sorts of images and things that are, are given to us in the culture today. But there are other ways that we can use people too. We can use people to, to try and, and get something that they have, to cheat on homework, or a lot of different ways. Your duty of the moment is to look at whatever person has been placed in front of you. A classmate, a friend a sibling, a co-worker, a digital representation of a person. And look for the way to love the person and not to use them. And finally, I'd say part of your duty of the moment is to pray. Is to look for the moment, for the opportunity that you can turn your heart to God and, and hear what He has to say. Because I am convinced that God does want to speak to you every day. And the question is, do you give him the space to speak? Are you open to his voice? Because if he's the one who made you and he's the one who loves you, then he's worth listening to. 
not all of us will be called to do great and tremendous and heroic things. But there may become moments in our lives where there's an opportunity to do some great right thing, some great good thing that comes along. And like Sam Gamgee, our capacity to do those great things is greatly increased if we spend our time doing the next good thing, whatever simply that might be. Even if it's simple and ordinary and mundane.